Good afternoon, everybody. It's John Finnegan. All right. So this last year we we commercialized and introduced four new products. We thought it'd be a great idea on uh, the beginning of the year just to get a little more overview on those and maybe anybody who missed them, you get all four at once. Uh, you're going to get the speed version. <coughs> Golly, excuse me, because um, I don't want to hold you guys up too long. But there's some interesting content here. I will move right along. So at the end of it, you know, please get a hold of uh, whoever your local rep is or anybody at Noise Barriers, and we'll be glad to get you more information, discuss your question or your application further. They're all four kind of very unique products. So um, though you'll see the original presentations. Some slides I'll move through rather quickly, just in the uh, interest of time, um, so that we're not on here for you know 45 minutes or something. I'm gonna try to keep it right to the point and uh, get you guys out of here in, in less than half an hour if you can hang in there that long. So we're gonna review the Quiet Swing Alexis door. That's kind of the flagship of the entry last year. Brand new product, brand new concept. Um, very cool, I'll say. Um, a product that we're gonna be using to uh, expand that platform very much. The Quiet Pivot, uh, again, a very unique application specific uh, product right thing for the right place for the right purpose you'll see why the quiet slide uh, we did so many enhancements to it that we reintroduced it um, with various drive mechanisms and such which i'll discuss and then the quiet light i'm going to briefly go over some of the windows but really spend more time on the split frame window because that was the key to the launch last year so here we go i'm starting with the alexis door so introducing the next generation of Noise Barriers doors, as I said, it's a platform we hope to expand on. You can see from the look there, uh, extremely low profile, both in frame, um, hinge appearance, hardware, et cetera. Um, flawless visual, it's, I kind of stole the show there. It's the concealed hinge is the, the reason it looks so um, flush. And it's that way on both sides, obviously, but the pole side is always the side where you see the hinge, you no longer see it, ideal for hallways and such. Uh, high-end applications, refined applications, aesthetics critical. Um, throughout this video, I'll just say there's there's four little very cool, very informative uh, rendering videos. The Alexis Swing one, Becca will play now, and it's a, it runs you through how the door arrives to finish look to features. And then we're gonna have one for each of the other products, mostly highlighting the ease of installation or a few specifics on the installation, really give you guys a handle on how the product arrives, how it goes in, what it looks like. So with that, go ahead, we'll start with the first one here for Alexis. All right, so uh, hope you enjoyed that. It, it kind of hits on these, um, a little bit of everything on this list here, except the performance, we'll talk about that later. But it really shows you what's special about this door. And we, since we launched this in the spring, we've already made a few enhancements that I'll touch on um, at various points here. 
the uh, the hinge design is by far the the one that jumps out at you. It's the concealed hinge. There's a a little section on that. The perimeter seal is very unique. Uh, not anything that's uh, standard or anything we've used before. So it was developed. You see a little patent pending check here. That's this seal and this seal system is a huge part for the patent uh, we're seeking on this door. The bottom seal uh, is different than we've used before. The door leaf, uh, the way it ships fully assembled, truly fully assembled because it's in the frame. Uh, we factory assembled our other doors, but this one is fully assembled. Then we get into some of the options and then I'll finally wrap up with the performance. It's a concealed hinge. You see it here, uh, it comes in black and chrome. It's a uh, level swing, so it's not a cam lift, but it does come with some features that allow great flexibility in that three axis adjustability. That allows me to move the door up and down, left and right, and what most people can't do is move it in and out to maintain the pressure we want in the on the seal. If it's adapting to some type of site condition or uh, over a course of time, it's worn a little bit and you know shaken out and the building settled and you're moving away from that hinge, in the field, we could bring that door right back against the hinge with just the adjustability in this hinge. High, high testing cycles, excellent. Super low coefficient of friction. The door opens with absolutely no effort. Uh, it doesn't pierce the perimeter seal, so the whole it's one continuous seal around the uh, both jams in the head. Clean look from the pull side. That's what we really were shooting for to kind of really ramp up the aesthetics of a noise control door to try to bring it into the architectural designer world. Um, and then the high security where there are no hinges, so the hinge can't be cut or pin can't be knocked out. Um, so it gives great tampering resistance. The seal, which I mentioned, is a it's a proprietary seal. It's a high density, low durometer um, composite seal. Uh, there's there meaning that there's some uh, rubber components to it. There's some hollow spaces, and then we have um, absorptive foam materials embedded within that in some of the chambers of the seal. So it's a rather simple looking but rather sophisticated seal to get us the performance where we're starting here with this door. Um, it's uh, non-magnetic, so there's no opening force. I spoke about how the hinge has a low coefficient of friction, easy to open. The door, when you uh, disengage the lax, it's actually somewhat compressive. So when you disengage the lax, the door pops open a little bit and swings easily. So very ADA friendly on all fronts. The bottom seal, um, uh, it has articulation in the X and Y axis, so I can move uh, the door. Uh, the, the seal to where I want full engagement and compression, then I can also rotate it um, on its axis, uh, if that makes sense to you. So I maintain a maximum inch and three quarter bottom seal on the threshold, even if that takes just a little 30 second of a rotation, uh, either away from the door or into the opening, I can do that and then reset the seal. It's self-adjusting, it slides up onto this threshold, there's oh so slight a uh, taper on this threshold. The naked eye wouldn't even be able to detect it, but the composition of this bottom seal mated with that threshold makes for a fantastic, repeatable, nice tight seal. And it too is a low durometer uh, polymer seal, excuse me. So if there is for some reason any kind of a small deviation on that threshold or for some reason a, a slight slope or depression, it learns that uh, deviation, very friendly to that. Uh, the door leaf itself, very unique. It's an inch and three quarter, which I touch on a bullet point, which changes our whole world. Um, as many of you know, this is a two and a half, three and inch, three and a half and five inch thick door. We've always been modifying our hardware to get it to fit. This inch and three quarter slab allows us to get back into very standard user friendly inch and three quarter hardware. The door leaf itself is uh, a polymer based uh, core. And constrained damping means that you know the two skins and the internals of that constrain the the polymer that we I'll say pour into the door. So it, it, it's a filled door system um, that is very unique to us. But with that, um, it allows us to use uh, somewhat less steel, lighter steel, I'll say, and and the and the action of the low durometer core allows the door to be lighter than our other doors at this same um, STC rating, which is uh, 51, which I'll show you later. 
and uh, yeah, that's it. Ships just like that, you saw it in the uh, video. We factory assemble it, fit up, adjust all the hinges so you have the perfect reveal, the seal contact we want, and it shows up like that with the threshold on it. You open the crate. We try to, you know, 15 years of installing doors, we just try to make them easier and easier to install to take that uh, wild card out of the uh, acoustic performance. And this door really kind of takes a big jump in that, that you don't even take the door off the frame. You don't take the, you don't put the threshold in separately. It all goes in as one piece. As you saw in the video, it comes out of a crate that looks just like that. Um, and that's just highlighting, uh, you know, the ease of the installation. It goes in from one side. Then we use that keyway in the threshold. I think you saw it. You see it in the lower left-hand corner to really lock that threshold into the H style that we've always used. <coughs> excuse me, single leaf at this point. Um, so it's easy to do this. We are, uh, on a side note, developing a double leaf. That's where we'll have to make a, a chain from this model, obviously, but we're gonna maintain as much of that minimal field installation as possible. So out of player, out of square in, uh, uh, openings aren't the issue that they used to be, as long as you just hold that door plumb and square. 30 minutes, we've installed several in the field now. Uh, we're doing a soft rollout on it. so. Um, as it gradually builds more momentum, we really do see a 30-minute door installation per door uh, holding true. Uh, concealed closer. We could conceal hardware in this door that we never were able to do before in our double magnetic seal cam lift. The concealed closer actually is, is one of the hinges, and then the hydraulic body goes inside the door that you see there. So the whole function and the piston action happens inside the door, and you see no closer not even an overhead closer. It takes place in the hinge body. Uh, we've installed several of these in the field and the, the look is just, as you can imagine, second to none. And then you get the performance of the closer. It does limit the uh, max opening to 125 degrees where the regular um, concealed hinge will open all the way to the wall. So that's, that's one of the things that you, you run into regularly with a closer, but it is one of the restraints here. But that's still well past 90 for the, for the function you're getting. And again, the aesthetics. Factory glazed, much like our other doors, we don't let anything happen in the field. We do a full vision, narrow or a half light. Double, double glazed, absorptive interstice uh, very quickly. And then we launch this door to 51. We're hoping uh, to take this particular platform a little bit lower to make a very uh, competitive yet uh, aesthetic 40-45 type door. And then we're also gonna take this door system up into the mid 50s. The double leaf I mentioned um, is well on its way to being launched later this year. And there is no built out astragal. It's an integrated astragal between the uh, two door leaves. So we maintain this whole flush. Flush and concealed is kind of the whole motive of this door and we're not trying to vary. Right now we don't have a fire rating on the single leaf door. All right, the pivot door, super cool product, um, but application dependent. You don't put these everywhere. Um, but you can see from the picture there what the concept is. It's a room divider uh, with large panels that are stationary. All right, that one didn't have the sound, but it was really just music anyway. So uh, you get the idea of uh, you know what that functionality is and what it fits for. Uh, visually, it's beautiful. Uh, it does give you <coughs> use operation, and by use I mean how you divide the space. You can open one of these panels, so you can see in the picture to the right there's four panels that divide this um, lounge area from the performing area. You can open just that one and have everybody feed through that one side. You don't have to retract the whole track wall or take one piece. These do not go in a closet so that you don't have to worry about closet space. You could have a curtain wall application on each side like you see in this picture um, and you don't have to worry about storing anything. And you can open any one of them at any time to any degree. Uh, you can put them at 45 degree angle. You'll see some different opening combinations, but it's the flexibility to divide a 
uh, uh, two spaces or a reception area is what we see a lot uh, for like a waiting area or a gathering area and then on into the performing center. There's an example of uh, four of them, uh, like at a 45 degree angle. You can see there's steps and stuff that's a gathering area and the performing arts, the, the theater is where we are in this picture. But I'll run through the design um, concept of the stationary doors. I touched on no closets, panel frame installation hardware, some options on finishing and the performance. Puma design, uh, it's a pivot. Uh, it's a level swing pivoting. It's not a cam lift. The, the, there's a pivot block top and bottom. There's a double magnetic perimeter seal. It's based on our quiet swing double magnetic seal system. It, 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 the door panel itself looks like a you know, giant one of our single leaves. And you can see that in the little detail there about the interface. Uh, again, this is a highly uh, cycle tested product, very low coefficient of friction. Um, frankly, almost too little. They, they open almost effortlessly. Split frame system for each of the jams in the header uh, for wrapping the wall or whatever the condition is we've desired for the rough opening that sets your, your frame width to width. And again, the double magnetic seal system all the way over to the jam. Clean look both sides. There's no hinges showing. There's only the hardware if you were to put pull handles, you don't need to. Um, and then uh, options as I touched on, one, all, at each end, keep the center closed and have traffic flowing like a, you know, uh, outside the wheel, so to speak. Um, so you have options on exactly how you want to use it and how you want to open it. Uh, basic drawing there of, you know, uh, closed and then are in the 90 degree position, jam on each side. This is a plan view, uh, elevation rather, and a section plan view uh, up above it. We've done up to eight independent door panels. Um, could go further, but that can span as far as we've ever needed to go. So uh, it can be up to eight. We say individual door widths, three to six feet. Uh, typical runs around five. Individual door height, six to 12. Um, again, in this application, we've seen typical is about 10. Um, open position to 90 degrees and any angle in between you'd want. This is just using the one panel, as I said, along the window so that you could feed traffic through that. This particular one has some very heavy mill work. I think I touch on it later, but these doors, because of the center pivot, um, are very um, acceptable of heavy mill works and heavy uh, metallic finishes. Um, you don't have to worry about weight on hinges you know, moments generated from having that too much weight out on a door leaf that's like a swinging door. Uh, very quickly, a section drawings of where the, how the track would embed in a, in a concrete floor, how it attaches to uh, structural. We handle all that drawing interface with an engineer. Early on in the design, we wanna make sure that you have a, a heavy enough structural uh, beam up there. And then through the submittals, we're very involved with uh, where and what um, our blocks will need to go and how to prep for them. Um, Rotation on the Y, self-adjusting, maintain constant pressure. Uh, yep, all right. I think that says enough about that. No closets is, you know, the key. You can see they, they stay in place. So if your closet space is not available and you need to kind of stay in the space, this is what works perfectly. And you don't have to worry about jacking any panels up or down and pushing them over into a closet. Swing it open and it's good to go. I uh, touched on the slab sizes. They are five inch thick panels, um, damp steel construction, Along the lines of the doors you guys are probably familiar with are two and a half, three and a half. This particular one's five just um, for the structural requirements needed and to uh, conceal the block that we use for the pivot system. Split frame I touched on and the double magnetic seal. It's a picture of the, um, you know, the jam situation where you can see our typical frame. Our typical frame. Ships full panels. Nobody's assembling a panels. Nobody's putting seals on. Um, feels, as I said, seals factory installed on each of the door panels. They're installed on the frames. Uh, it's set in sections as large as possible for getting into the building and handling and freight. Um, thresholds is desired. Um, if it, we work around it if it can't go in there, but we desire a threshold. Hardware, any kind of fixed pull handle. You can see the long uh, fixed pulls on these. You don't need handles. You can put a little push plate. They would open that easily. You set them in place with the uh, sliding. Um, set bolts uh, uh, that keep them in place from pivoting open or un opening unnecessarily if you don't want somebody to push them open. And 90 degrees is the max opening. Touched on it, wood veneer, mill work, wood veneer and mill work, big and heavy, could be fine. Um, 
And then also just powder coated, you saw in the rendering, we do several just powder coated and the ones you just saw above were powder coated. A lot of flexibility in how you want it to look. Each one could be different if you want. And it's an STC 45 system, non-fire rated. Quiet slide doors, big, heavy, large, oversized, um, 10 by 10, 20 by 20, uh, power operated, automatic sliding doors. That rendering video kind of steals the show. Uh, it it really shows everything about it, but I'll run through um, the design options. You saw the ease of us, uh, um, installation. It, much like all of our products, we try to take as much field assembly and bolting together and adjustments out as possible. Um, and I'll touch on many of those things really quickly through here. Um, horizontal, uh, typically motorized is what we're talking about here. Manually operated, uh, just FYI. The doors are heavy. They slide on very uh, refined uh, linear track and bearing systems, meaning there's very little friction, but they are so heavy. Uh, they are hard to open, even with that low friction operating system. We almost insist on motor operated over eight by eight. If you had a six by six, a six by eight, you could get away with it. Uh, people have tried to you know, manually operate 10 by 10s or you know, 10 by, you can't, it, too hard so that's just a tip typically single slab slide left or slide right depending on the wall space allotted in the design biparting um, very common and we can even do with our belt drive system in the linear track it's it's very easy for us to do unequal biparting you could be up against the wall like you see in the far end of this picture for example where you only have uh, four feet but you have eight feet to the right but you want a 12 foot door so um, you couldn't slide either one either way see so we can Put a four foot slab off to the left and run an eight footer over to the right. Vertical lift, I'm not going to do much time on that. Also, motor operated, uh, single slab and telescoping, mostly focusing on the horizontal sliding here. The rendering video we just saw, it's excellent. Here's an actual picture of um, the rendering video, it was based off of that track being mounted. Uh, you can see that the shrouds are up around the framing where the seal systems would go. And then that track you see up there arrives from the factory like that. The motor is on there, the drive system is on there, the track is on there, the trolley mounts are on there. Nothing is left to chance because we mount this in the factory. Assemble the door and we run the door. So there's no reason there should be a hang up in the field. We eliminate, you know, field stuff is expensive. Fit up is critical and speed is critical. So we've always done and we continue to do all our products with as much factory uh, assembly as possible. So when that top rail goes up, gets mounted, uh, you'll see in the next couple of pictures, you're off to the races and you saw in the video, uh, just installing the frame and then trimming things out. They come large panel sections like that. There's actually several doors on this. So that's why you see some larger crates. They nest together, bolt together. And then there's closure plates. They can be demounted as well. I don't know if you'd ever want to do that. That's a still picture of the forklift bringing it in. You can do two jacks, various things. But I touched on the fact that it leaves the factory like that, fully drive ready. This happens to be an exterior application. Then you simply mount the tracks, one, two, three. Uh, I think the tracks, the panels, up lower, lower, lower in the middle, and then the whole bottom seal component goes on last. We tried shipping 10 by 20 door leaves. It didn't work out too well. Uh, here's an example of a, a biparter, big one. You can see the size of the guy in the opening there. Uh, I dare say it was 30 foot. I think it was 28 or 30 feet. Uh, quiet operation, extremely quiet. No, you don't hear any tracks in trolley, no Richard Wilcox, no uh, rollers. It's all done on linear track. 
um, and linear bearings with a with a uh, neoprene belt drive. Adjustability then once it's installed gives us great sealing. Nope, oh, that's just one more thing on the belt drive. You can see it's all on there, even the belt. Nobody's nobody's field fishing the belt onto the, the sprocket and the drives. It's already been done and tested. Programming within the control boxes. We're very specific, uh, and I don't touch on this here. Our, our drawings are extremely clear through the submittal stage, the installation stage, and the shipment stage as to who's responsible for what, where our electrical responsibilities end and where the building electrician needs to join, where our structurals stop and where the building has to be. So we've made this as bulletproof, so to speak, as possible uh, with that set of drawings for uh, delineation of responsibility could not be any more clear. Yep, adjustable bottom seal. Uh, it, it, you can get at it, take it off, replace it, and then remount it back in. You don't have to take the door off. And the vertical lift door, I'll kind of blow through that. That's a monster also, three section. There you go. This is, uh, we do all the controls, you know, in-house. We do everything in-house for this door. Um, and we do all the controls. The key component of this is we don't want anybody going inside this control box. Um, every electrician on a job site thinks he can go in and you know he knows what he's doing with relays. So <clears throat> between the drawings and the fact we lock this um, and only give the key to the owner and tell them never go in it unless you call us first, it, it eliminated so many problems. So it's a it's a UL certified uh, electrical box, and we dummy it down to just connections of power on the outside with a little jump box. We don't want anybody ever going in here that's not one of our installers or our technicians to, again, eliminate a problem in the field. Typical, here's your typical control panel on the, uh, once we close that box, seal it, you know, and lock it. Those are your four typical operations. Open it, close it, stop it, you know, once it's on its way and then the e-stop. We could do you know anything somebody wants particular, but this covers 95% of what anybody wants. You get full wiring di diagrams. It's all done through the submittal process. This door isn't fire rated yet, um, but we what we do and have great success at it is use a uh, fire shutter. And we mount the door on one side, and mount the fire shutter on the other side. This door, um, everything is on the theater side. Those are as you look through the door. Those are the undersides of. Uh, uh, bleachers seating for a, in the round theater. The drive system and everything is on the back. This one has a disengage because they have a lot of power problems here. So that's why you see those pull handles. They may have the occasion more often than anybody else where they'd have to pull those open. You could do it with ups, but they wanted to go one step beyond that and make sure they could pull it open if they had to. And on this side, you see that brown shroud is a fire shutter. Drops down over that whole opening. A really inexpensive way to do that. Yes, you need um, wall space on the other side of the door, but um, it's a, it's an extremely effective way to fire rate the door system. That's how we do it. We either supply the fire shutter or work with a contractor and you know tell them the size and everything of the fire shutter we need, coordinated into the operator. STC 51, um, we do make uh, sliders higher STC. Uh, we don't test slide. You can see what's involved with installing a slider. Um, it's very difficult to go to a lab and install a full-size sliding door over and over again because you're screwing into all their um, walls. Um, it's not a it's not a super easy thing to do. The 51 is proven. We have gone as high as a 55 uh, based on theoretical. The slab can get to seven eight inches thick, um, and the seal system varies. And then we will stand behind a, a field report. We just would not have an STC report. But so we do stand behind field performance of those. And then it's much easier to go down. So if it's a 45 or a 40 requirement, uh, we can get there as well. It's, it's in essence the same door, to be honest, but we do lighten things up just a hair for cost. That's a miscellaneous personnel doors we can put you know inside the slab so that if you don't have to open the door all the time. We do do pneumatics. Once we're getting into ISDCs, we do do pneumatics. Um, they're much more complicated and expensive, so that's not in our basic STC 51 door. We do storage pockets so that if you don't want to see the door open or you don't want anybody fiddling with it when it's in the open position, it can slide into it because we make modular panel systems. We can make the pocket conceal that door. Various thicknesses I talked about, powder coating, absolutely. Um, we do put windows in them on occasion. The picture to the right there is actually an interesting two slab vertical lift door. Uh, that operated from a recess in the floor and vertically lift 
it, it closed in the up position. So it's kind of unique, 35 feet wide, two slabs. We make an HM window, which is a fixed window. Um, great, great for a million applications, uh, but you have to trim it out. You, you get a rough opening, slide the window into it, mount it, and then and then trim it. Whether wood or I've seen a you know a variety of different ways. The split frame window comes in from both sides of the rough opening. The window frame itself wraps the rough opening, so it's done uh, trim wise uh, uh, when you install it. It does have a little eyebrow, which is you know kind of cool and perfect for some applications, but there's no trim required. It's also much better for high performance walls that are designed to be isolated you're putting a window system in there that is truly isolated. You're installing two sides of a window, that perf interstice you see there in essence floats. So we maintain the integrity of high ITC walls. Um, real quick, some of the offerings on windows, and then I'm going to touch on the, the split frame mostly. We make a lot of windows. We've tested a lot. You could never test enough. Um, so, you know, if somebody wants an STC 60, they're going to get an STC 62. If they want a 52, they're going to get a 53 in, in various combinations. Uh, we could test windows every day. We make a lot of windows, and our windows uh, perform fantastically variety of different styles. I won't even get into the U-frame. The HM is kind of the fixed bread and butter, factory installed, factory assembled, goes in as a module, super fast field installation. But as I said, you have that little trim detail to worry about, but you have proven performance out of the box. And then the split frame, it does come, as you saw in the video, it's more of a kit. Uh, so it does require a little bit of field uh, installation more so than the other model, but it does give you that isolation if that's what's absolutely critical. And, and, and you don't wanna be trimming afterward. Uh, steel frame, all of our windows are steel frame. Uh, we do have some aluminum, but that's a whole different story. Um, powder coated most colors, we typically prime paint them, can be painted black. Um, the, the liner is always black, but that also can be painted. We dabble with once in a while doing fabric um, inside, uh, you know, uh, fiberglass wrap panels. Desk kit always included glass, variety of different glazings, variety of different slopes, um, and then paint finish if if required. Otherwise, it's just prime. Uh, I think I touched on steel. You know the STC ratings, 43 all the way up to a 64. Uh, four designs. Mostly this was for the split frame. Um, all of ours are lab tested. Obviously, uh, we do offer ballistic ratings. We do offer privacy options, which are some of you may be familiar with switch light glass. Uh, we're seeing a fair amount of that requirement, especially in the security industries. So one of the pieces of glass um, are, are charged with low voltage uh, power and they actually turn white. They turn, you can't see through them and then flip them a switch, they become clear again. We can incorporate that style of glass, which most of you probably are familiar with in these windows. Hollow metal, you can see here, it slides into the opening. Um, you could tell the frame and the glass stop is flush with the outside of the drywall or whatever that wall happens to be. And it does require that block trimming. You see there is a dotted line. So I touched on that and that's the story with that. You do need to trim that out. Otherwise you've got a caulk gap. Split frame, you don't need that. It wraps around that drywall, wraps right around the, the rough opening. All of our drawings 
um, clearly depict how to frame the rough opening. Everybody agrees on the wall thickness, rough opening size width, uh, what kind of blocking we want on all four sides, and then how to install it. That's just four cut sections of you know it wrapping the wall. Uh, slope glass, absolutely, do it all the time, not a problem. Single side, both sides. Uh, that talks about how you can butt windows uh, together, two different mullion types, either a mullion built into the window or you know module by module. Yep, good. I was just talking while you flipped. Thanks. That's a big split frame. Um, I will say the split frame does let you do these large control windows because you're just bringing in the piece of glass. If we were to do that window as a hollow metal, you'd need about seven guys, two pallets, roll it in, and it would weigh, you know, a thousand pounds. Uh, at that size, you're bringing all the componentry, mounting the frame, installing it. Then you're just installing two pieces of glass. Totally different story. And you can see that's a pretty cool look. Um, trims itself out to the wall, nothing extra needed, looks great. That's a really deep shooting range window. It's probably an 18 inch thick. That's an HM window that slid into a masonry. Uh, so in that case, the masonry rough opening was just barely oversized, slid in, and then they did just caulk joint that. Sloped, double sloped windows, typical studio. Um, you know, we do get into some other windows. It's just a pretty job we did here with butt glazing. Uh, that's going to be a whole nother webinar. We're seeing more and more desire for it. We're doing it more and more. Um, uh, and this is floor to ceiling butt glazing in our frame system, um, mostly in the back there and the header on the one in the front. We're getting, we're getting very diverse in windows. Look for more from us on that. Full height windows butted, uh, control windows. Uh, those are some windows at a, uh, an off uh, breakout office at uh, the UN, interpreter booths all the way around the perimeter there, and their delegates would be sitting in front of them, but they're also divided all in the mid STC 50, so they can't hear each other or be disturbed by each other. And then there's a studio, uh, I believe that's Georgia Public Radio down at the bottom, and uh, just some typical more windows. I think we're just going to wrap it up here with a couple pictures. Anything you want um, that you saw there, picture-wise, video-wise, details, more discussions, give us a call. Your rep, me, anyone at Noise Bearers, um, we'll be glad to help you out. I really appreciate you guys coming and uh, hope you enjoyed the overview. That was last year and that much again coming this year. So thanks for catching up. Have a great evening. Talk to you. Bye. Mm -hmm.